Hi, welcome to another episode of Mindscape Matters, a channel to discuss mental health and more. I am Dr. Mohan Raj and I am a consultant psychiatrist based in Chennai and I will be your guide as we explore this wonderful landscape together. In an earlier episode, we had discussed about what is normal with reference to anxiety. Now, in this episode, let's go a little further and discuss in detail about when is anxiety considered as an illness. First, let's see what is called as anxiety disorder. The main symptoms are fear, intense fear. Second is inability to relax. The person is so restless, the person will say, I'm just not able to relax. Even if I lie down, even if I sit, I'm just not able to relax. And the third one is muscular tension. This muscle tension is the cause for headache in the front, headache in the back, occipital region, neck pain, back pain, or general body pain. Now, these are the three main symptoms. Along with this, some people, when they are intensely anxious, can also have palpitation, that is, heart beating very faster, and breathlessness, breathing becoming very high, so much so they feel they are gasping for breath, they can have giddiness, they can have tremors of the hand, sweating. Now, in an earlier episode, we had talked about why all these symptoms happen. The fear could be about anything. It could be an external factor like an exam, appraisal, interview, talking to few people, talking to principal, like multiple things. One of the commonest fears that people report is fear of illness. Usually, somebody's father or an uncle would have had a heart attack or a stroke and from that time they have these symptoms and they also have a fear. Now some of them will talk about these fears. They would say I am afraid whether I will get a heart attack for genetic factors or because of lifestyle being very similar or they fear I might have a stroke because my neighbor had it or worse some people will not talk about fear. We talked about why we don't talk about emotions in an earlier episode. Some people don't talk about fear, but they will keep complaining about bodily symptoms. They will say, my heart is racing. They will say, I'm sweating. And when you ask them, when did it all start? They would say, oh, it started a week after my uncle died of a heart attack. Fear of illness is a proxy for fear of death. Now, some people are open about it. They are afraid that I'll have a heart attack, I might die, and what will happen to my family? That's something which they talk about. Now, there are people who do not talk about death. They don't want to even utter the word death. Even if they ask for symptoms, they will say, don't talk about it. And they sometimes do not attend funerals, do not want to talk about people's death. They somehow feel if you utter the word, something bad is going to happen. And some of them have fear of accidents either for themselves when they fly or travel or worse, they have fear of accidents when their loved ones go out. So typically it could be calling them, asking them, where are you? When are you going to come? And if they say, I'll be there in half an hour, 31st minute they will call and say, you haven't come, where are you? Are you safe? Now, what is very embarrassing is many youngsters tell us that Parents will call their mobile after school saying, are you safe? Have you reached? And for some reason, if the boy or girl had the phone in silent mode because of the class, parents will start calling all their friends to ask, is my daughter or son safe? And they say, it's so embarrassing that my mom or father keep calling. Another common theme in anxiety is fear of failure, which all of us are familiar with. Now, fear of failure can actually be beneficial in a very mild form if it happens much earlier. But if it is severe, persistent, that can disable a person. Performance anxiety is very well known. Any performance, it could be attending an interview, writing an exam, going on stage and giving a speech, making a presentation, dancing, singing, acting, anywhere they feel my performance is going to be judged will cause performance anxiety and some people it can be very disabling. The list of what the anxiety is about is endless. It can be practically about 
everything about their daily life. On the other hand, some people have what is called as free-floating anxiety. What it means is they experience intense anxiety, all the symptoms which we talked about, but they won't be able to put a finger on what's causing anxiety. They will say, I just don't know. One person put it very eloquently. He said, I was very anxious and I didn't know why I was anxious. Then a train of thought came and like we go and catch a train, the anxiety went and caught that train of thought. A little later, it was another train of thought. And much later, I realized, no, these thoughts have nothing to do with my anxiety. I am just anxious and I am just looking for some reason to tell others. Another type of anxiety is called panic disorders. In panic, the person would experience intense anxiety with all the bodily symptoms. The anxiety will be episodic and brief. It can last from say 5 seconds to 1 minute, rarely 5 minutes and it can be very intense. After that, they settle down. Now, in between two episodes, they'll be completely normal, no symptoms at all. Or some people can have some amount of anticipatory anxiety. When am I going to get my next episode? This is called panic disorder. Another type of anxiety is called phobia. It's a very common term, all of us know. But in newspapers, many times people use it as if it's a synonym for anxiety and fear. It's not. There is a crucial difference. Phobia is anxiety for a specific object, situation or activity and active avoidance of the object, situation or activity. When I say object, it can be anything, animate or inanimate. Inanimate, an example I can give you is blood, seeing blood. Animate can be practically any animal. Commonest would be phobia for dogs, phobia for cats, lizards, spider. And they would actively avoid. Some people can't even look at pictures of dogs. Coming to situations, the common situations that can cause phobia are phobia for closed spaces like lifts, small rooms. Phobia for open places, phobia for crowded places and heights. There are many more, but these are the four common ones. A person having phobia for closed places avoids a lift or a waiting hall. The person will not hesitate to climb even 20 floors to reach an office if he can avoid the lift. Now, a phobia for crowded places. The reason why they have phobia is they must have had their first panic episode in that situation. For example, somebody gets the first panic episode in a crowded mall. So next time they go to a mall and see it crowded, they anticipate, am I going to get another episode? And will I get medical help? In this crowd, can they take me out? Let me avoid the crowded place. That's how phobia begins. Now, phobia for open places, people who suffer from that can't even go out to a shop and buy something. They'll be homebound and they'll be dependent on others to buy things for them or somebody will have to accompany wherever they are going. If you ask people who have phobia, when did this start? How did this start? They will all have a story to tell you. Now, I'll tell you one story. This person was a railway employee working in a small station in a remote area. And there were very few trains which passed that station. And trains have passed and he knew there is going to be a three hour break. And he and his colleague sat in a goods train, which was not supposed to leave till that night. They sat there and started playing cards. As they were playing, they suddenly heard a huge noise and realized somebody was locking the door and putting a latch at the same time. The compartment became dark completely and he panicked. And he started banging the floor and nobody could hear because as soon as the door was closed, the train started leaving. The train started moving and there was a lot of thud noise and he and his friend were knocking everywhere and nobody could hear it. He panicked for 10 minutes and then got exhausted 
It took three hours for the train to stop in some remote station and they started banging again and then somebody opened and let them off. From that day, whenever he is in a small room, he starts reliving this experience and so much so that he avoids small rooms. Same thing to do with lift. If he has to go to 25th floor, he would rather walk. He will not take the lift. So that's how his phobia began. Coming to activity. The most common activity that causes phobia is public speaking. Now, in its milder form, they'll be able to talk normally. They'll avoid only public speaking. In the most severe form, they will avoid even presenting to three close colleagues. And you can have a gradation in between. Another common phobia is taking an injection. They'll have fear of injections. They will avoid it completely. When it comes to light is when parents take their children for vaccination. If the mother has phobia, she'll hold the child and will be extremely anxious, will start screaming when the pediatrician is about to give vaccination to the child. And the pediatrician and the child sees the mother screaming, the child will also start screaming. The pediatrician will say, okay, you don't hold, let the father hold. Now the father will be holding the child as the needle nears the child the mother who is standing away will start screaming and the child starts screaming. This is a very common scenario in a pediatric clinic. You might have heard or read about words where phobia is a suffix. There are many, many words to describe different phobias, but it's not an exercise in psychiatry. In psychiatry, when we want to communicate, we say phobia for and we describe the specific object, situation or activity. Using these words are an exercise in English and it's loved by people who do crosswords. In fact, there is a word for phobia for complex and long words. I'm not even going to try to pronounce them. You can read it here. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this, please tell four of your friends. If one of them would love to watch this in Tamil, tell them that it's available in Tamil also. And stay tuned because Mindscape matters. Bye.